Well, folks, I've discovered something rather terrifying. George Washington was a cannibal. Welcome to Saturday Scares with Kyle, and we're, t we're talking about the Washingtonians today. Um, if you don't know, this is actually one of the uh, films in Mick Garris's series, Masters of Horror. Uh, you can call them a TV show if you want, but I, I see them as films. The directors had more importance over the writers. Uh, they had higher budgets. They were allowed to do whatever they wanted within the confines. These are feature films, and they qualify per the Academy Rules of Length. So I'm counting it. Uh, the Washingtonians is directed by Peter Medak, who's a filmmaker we've covered a couple times previously on our main show. We did The Changeling, we did Romeo is Bleeding. This is one of his contributions. Uh, the series of films was created by Mick Garris basically because he used to have dinners with all these horror filmmakers, people like Stuart Gordon, John Carpenter. He would have all these people, we'd have them all around. They would have a big dinner together and talk about their careers and talk about their past. And eventually got around to the idea, what if I gave each of these filmmakers like $2 million and a month to make a horror film? That's what we got here with The Washingtonians. It's based on a short story by, or a short story by Bentley Little, who's a writer that you might not know about because he doesn't really do a lot of public appearances. But he kind of releases a new book every single year um, for the longest time. And one of his short stories was about a man who discovers that uh, George Washington was a cannibal and that there's a secret society of George Washington cosplayers that have been living on that tradition for uh, decades and decades. Um, the film stars Jonathan Sheck, who again, not someone that's maybe the most well-known person, but he's both been a writer and an actor in the film business for about 20 years or so. He actually wrote and starred in Roadhouse 2. That's right, there was a Roadhouse 2, as well Shut as up. appearing that's in... Right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He also appeared in the Day of the Dead remake, uh, the, the better of the two Day of the Dead remakes called Day of the Dead Bloodline. He pay, played Bub the Zombie. Um, does a pretty good job in that film, and I think he's, he's serviceable here. This film is not really here for its performances. It's here for its zany kind of an, an arc that's being done here. Um, a lot of people that watch the film seem to have an issue with the campy tone that it took, which I find very odd. Because Why would the, you, if you know what's going in, you're going into? Like, right, yeah, yeah, like this is what you're getting out of this film. I, like I don't want it, but serious. that was just too gory for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Saw would be better without all the, all the torture porn. Yeah. Um, the problem that a lot of people had with it was that the campy tone didn't match what Bentley Little had written in his short story, where he went with more of a black comedy. Oh, I right. feel like the camp matches what the Masters of Horror collection was, as well as it matches a little bit more of what Peter Medak's doing. You can see some of the lower budget influences of things that he did in the past, like the changeling on this film. Uh, his, his shooting style sets up a little bit more of that haunted house film right at the beginning as they inherit this home and discover the painting of George Washington that has the secret letter. Um, it's zany, it's over the top, it's goofy, it's occasionally gory there's a scene at the end with a bunch of people in george washington costumes eating human flesh that feels like it was taken out of 1988 society uh, if you know that film and you know the shunting scene you'll know kind of what's on display here for the end of the washingtonians um my biggest criticism about the film is that the twists and turns leading up to that part feel a little simple we, we kind of know where we're going from moment one to moment you know end that's my really only big issue with the film. I also think the epilogue is kind of stupid. There's a big hit against George W. Bush at the end of the film, which is kind of just, you know, you do you, but it's kind of just an odd landing for the film to take, like, so the last like, 10 seconds. Something like a sticker on. Yeah, where it's like, yeah. it's unnecessary, and I yeah. don't think it's getting what you want as a filmmaker out of it. I don't think that it's reaching that way that you want. Um, big shout-out, though, to Saul Rubinek, who is an actor who never gets that much to do. He gets to play, uh, in this film, the professor that kind of has the heavy exposition of explaining this secret society. He also gets a fun little action set piece at the end of the film, uh, but he's most well known for being the drug-addled executive from True Romance, uh, and, and as well as being an Unforgiven. You've probably seen him on thousands of shows, though, realizing that the man's just kind of very prolific. Um, but he gets to be kind of the, the character who, in many ways, is representing the Redcoats of the film, and I really enjoyed what he brought to the table as both an exposition machine and also a little bit of added kookiness for the end. Um, yeah, the music is by Richard Band. I didn't realize that until after the film was done. It does have that kind of reanimator from beyond musical tale to it. Richard Band is Charles Band's brother, um, has done career work and horror stuff for decades now. Um, and it was nice to see his name associated with a, a pretty solid little score for, again, a very low-budget film, but one that I found ultimately 
Um, pretty enjoyable, pretty exciting. Not one of the high tiers of the Masters of Horror, but far from the bottom. Okay. This film rests in kind of just above the average. Um, but right. that, it's a zany idea, and I can't get past that. <laughs> we did a lot of those, like Abraham was a vampire killer and all that stuff. So yeah, I, so, I kind of like this fictional fantasy, historical fantasy. Yeah, and I think a lot of people who, who hated the film didn't give it its due credit. We we know it's not real, everyone. It's okay. <laughs> like, I think there was a lot of people that yeah. took offense to this, and it's like, I don't think George Washington, in all of his infinite dead wisdom, is going to be too upset about someone making a joke film about him being a cannibal. Yeah. Um, unless we find out it's the truth, in which case, uh, Ooh, yeah, be a shocking moment. Yeah. Join me next week, everyone, as we return to the muck and grime and sit back in a little basket with our friend Belial, because we're talking Basket Case 2. Shut up, next really? Time Woo! On the show.